Ah, uh, yes. SpongeBob Battle for Pokemon Rehydrated. The game that is a remake of the original game that everyone loves. Today I'm going to be sharing my opinion on this game and giving you an honest and fair rating of how I feel about it. This game has a lot that it does well and a lot that it doesn't do so well. So I'm going to try and cover most of the things that it does well while also covering the things it doesn't do well because you obviously want to hear about both of them. And we're going to be covering this in a few different parts. We're going to be doing gameplay, visual, or first is going to be visuals and graphics. Second is going to be gameplay. Third is going to be overall. And I'm just going to give you an honest opinion on how I feel about this game. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing is going to be the visuals. These visuals look amazing. Like I'm going to go and I'm going to start up this cutscene and you're going to see these visuals as you saw in the hub world and as you see here look amazing. There are a few things that I have to say about the visuals. So even though this looks amazing and we're in like the first cutscene looks great. A you saw the grass wasn't loaded. Like if we go into Jellyfish Field to my other profile, you're gonna see the grass isn't loaded. And look in the background, primarily at the back at that sign that just loaded in. Commonly, like this bout, this bikini bottom stinks. You saw it was all blurry and then loaded in. So that is a common occurrence in this game. That is not something that is just for this area. That's a common thing. So don't be scared if you see that. That's just them not optimizing it correctly. Other than that small thing, this game looks great. SpongeBob and, all, and his crew look quite amazing. The new dialogue stuff, which I'm going to show you in this clip coming up. Look, they just look amazing. It, like you can see how it kind of just loaded and you saw it blurry and then loaded here. It's another prime example. But look here. He, they look 10 times better. I'm just going to rush through it. Because you guys just want to know about the small stuff. But let's try going to jellyfish fields. And I'm going to show you what I mean. This game looks amazing whenever it's loaded and ready like you can see the grass and how all the lighting had the load that is the biggest complaint with the graphics other than that amazing so what would i rate the graphics in this game i would rate the graphics if you're playing on pc i would rate them a 9 out of 10. i can't say for other consoles but also to add on if you're playing on other consoles or have a bad PC, you might rate this differently. I've heard that there's common frame drops in this game. For me, I have not experienced any frame drops or else I would rate this lower. But if you're rating this based off other stuff, then it might be lower. So for the PC, that's amazing. 9 out of 10. For a PC, lower end PC or console, if you're like because of the lag spikes you will often receive I would give this like a 7 or 8 out of 10 and for Nintendo Switch the worst performing console you have you don't even have a steady frame rate anywhere and I've heard that Google Goon can often be really horrible so I would give the Switch even though I haven't seen it a 5 out of 10 sorry I just closed it out so yeah there you go you can see all that in the background I don't care but I would rate that game a 5 out of 10, this one a 9 out of 10, and consoles and lower end PCs 6 or 7. The graphics are obviously the strong part of this game, as you're going to see come sooner or later. Now let's get into part 2. The graphics part was very short and simple, just it looks really good if you have the right equipment. So, Gameplay. In terms of gameplay, 
This game has a ton of bugs. And it has a ton that needs to be worked out. As you've probably seen in the the two spat runs, where it literally, like, you can beat this game in two spats because the game is that buggy. But also, I'm going to go pull up this really quick. We can, we can go over here and you will see my browser, right? Okay. So I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to show you this. This is from one of my recent streams. This game's so buggy that you can clip through walls and you can just go here. And this is a real thing, by the way. Look, I still have the, the toll gain and everything. That is a real thing that happens. And for a game that, like today, to be having that kind of issue and that kind of laggy stuff is an issue for all to see. And it's just a shame that THQ Nordic and whoever else worked on this game, Purple Ant, it's just a shame that they couldn't fix this issue. Like, I'm going to even try and replicate it. See, we can you can get stuck in this wall, forcing you to reset if you don't get the glitch. I'm not going to show you the two spat stuff because I'm not good with it, but just know that that's a thing. So, yeah, that's a very bug, buggy gameplay. There's a bunch of different bugs. And yeah, so I'm going to talk about the main mechanics now that you probably want to know about. First, how does Spongebob and the crew control? How, how do they control? Let's see. Well, biggest things, so for Spongebob, his movement seems alright. I mean, it could be a bit more crisp and responsive to me. I'm using a GameCube controller given on PC, but... He does feel a bit uh, slow and unresponsive compared to the original. And I get that they had to build this from the bottom up, but like, movement today could be way better. His attack, this attack feels like it doesn't have a hitbox sometimes, and so you can commonly see it like not hitting certain things like robots. And the King Jellyfish fight was a pain because of this. His bow, his bash, only thing I don't like is how he takes the helmet off and it looks like he hits the ceiling, more or less. But they also added where you can just jump once and then do it, but not double jump, only single jump. But you don't get any extra height. The height is still the same as if you were to not jump. Let me show you what I mean. It's the same height. So overall, this attack kind of feels weird because the hitbox also feels very disjointed, especially in the Robo Sandy fight. So that, that's another part we're going to add is the bosses in gameplay. So this attack, not good. His bubble bounce, it feels alright. I mean, it feels a little fast, honestly. Like, he just feels like he's doing it too fast. And... It's very buggy. And then now the bubble bowl. So the bubble bowl, I have a lot of issues with like his two power ups he unlocks. So the bubble bowl, it would be good, but A, like I'm not moving the camera. Whenever you turn your control stick like you're moving to aim, the camera follows you. I don't remember that doing it in the original. And that makes it feel very uh, off and disjointed. Or not disjointed, but it feels off compared to what I would expect. And you'll notice that the same thing happens in slides when I get to slides later. And so it just makes it harder to aim for me, honestly. I feel like the camera should have been still and I should have been having more control of it. Because now both control sticks, you can move faster with it. But I feel like that's not the whole point of like aiming the bubble bowl. And why would you ever need to do that? And also, look, if you fully charge this, you go off this platform, which that's another issue too. Like, you go off the platform and it's just bad. 
overall, I, the momentum that you get with the bubble bowl going forward should have been way less. Also, speaking of which, let's talk about the gates real quick. These gates open real slow and close real slow, but it's a pain to do anything and to get them open if you have to be on one of these. Mainly when you have to use the bubble bowl, they're a pain. The trampolines, you probably just saw it, but let me show you it again. I'm gonna try and show off as much. So when, sometimes, like look, I'm jumping. I didn't have an animation when I double jump. Usually you do. You just saw it there, but for some reason, sometimes whenever you're on a trampoline, you just kind of get pushed up. There's no nothing. It's just kind of a push up, and it feels off. And they could have fixed this easily. Like there, I did get it, but it wasn't a big animation. So next, I'm gonna go on ahead and talk about our bubble, our. Uh, Sponge ball, or not sponge ball, the cruise missile. Many of you know that this was uh, relatively hard to control in the original game. In this game, it is 10 times harder to control the cruise bubble than it was in the original. And it's because A, the cruise bubble slower. Like, keep that in mind. You get more time. But the cruise bubble's slower, so in the end, it's going to go the same distance that it went in the original. And it's like deathly slow. It's not just a little bit slow. This thing is like death slow. And it's really stiff to control, like more so than the original. If you weren't a fan of the original, this is like worse. And it could be really hard to control this thing. Also, just another thing, like, he kind of does this. He used to just stand in place, but then when you let it go, he just goes. So I don't really get why, uh, I don't know, but this cruise missile is an issue. It feels awkward to control. It's just really difficult to control, and I overall just didn't like it. Now let's talk about the sponge ball. This power up, or this uh, transformation was known as the worst part of the original Battle for Bikini Bottom, or one of them, because of how horrible it controlled. In this game, this is probably their best improvement other than the graphics, is fixing the sponge ball. This thing feels so much better to control. You can jump while you're in it and it won't cancel it. And overall, I just like the feel of this now compared to what it was and it's a lot easier to control any sponge ball levels will no longer be a pain to get through because you will no longer be plagued with as difficult of momentum shift whenever you want to do momentum shifts so what's the next stuff well we're gonna go and we're gonna show you the slides by the way Something I forgot to add, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through every level and show off them kind of, but most of the levels in this game have fog. And honestly, I've seen screenshots without the fog and it looks much, much better. But let's go ahead and show you the slides. The, you saw the things load in on Sand Mountain 2. That's just a consistent thing across every single level. So now the slides. The thing that you guys are probably wondering about how does it compare so first of all they have white lines like whenever I was going down slides sometimes I would see white lines here I guess I don't see any probably because I'm not in a time challenge it's also another annoying thing is that upon going to a new level your health is not restored upon restarting the game your health is not restored unless you create a new profile so how is the sliding control? I keep saying a bunch of things, sorry, but uh, just like the bubble bowl, this the sliding mechanics suffer with like camera lock. You can see I can't move my camera up or down, or else it just kind of repositions itself. You can, and you can't move with the C stick. 
or like whatever you want to call it you can't move with your camera except for up and down and even then it just relocks itself you're forced to move with your movement stick or your movement keys and forced to do the slides like this and this feels really awkward and really weird at first maybe after some practice it's all right but to me this feels really awkward and really just out of place compared to what the original did where it kind of sort of controlled your control uh, your camera angle but not really so this one just feels very off Okay, now we're going to show you some Sandy Lasso. Biggest issue I have with this, there's two things I'm going to show you. One, whenever you lasso, you have to hold the lasso button now. Like, I let go of it, and I'm not allowed to, like, do anything. I'm not stuck with it. It just kind of lets me go. So you, that's one thing I don't like. Another is sometimes whenever you're on these lassos and you lasso, look, I don't have a double jump animation, kind of like the trampolines. And so it makes it really weird. Also, the slide in Sandy's Dream is much smaller, and you're going to find yourself having much more difficulties going around Sandy's Dream slide. Along with other slides, Kelp Vines was actually made a bit easier, but that's because it's more uh, closed in. I can show you that too. This slide was made more closed in, and honestly, it feels better. There was still one part where I was struggling, but overall, this slide's not that bad. It's more closed in, and I think that benefits the slide, because then you have more saving grace. Like, you can hit the walls and do something weird. And on the topic of this too, that Mermaid Man thing you saw... That plays every time whenever you go back to Kelp Slide. Sometimes cutscenes or quote or our dialogues, especially in Kelp Forest, like to replay whenever you touch certain areas. Rather than you seeing it and then it not playing again, they like to replay even if it's like that you just got the spatula. My movement turning was off. See, so like it just played again. Even though I already collected the spatula, it just plays over and over. So, Spongebob controls meh. Patrick is probably the best controlling of them all. Even though he has two different animations here. And honestly, if you do this animation, the, the stun, especially for when you're doing Drain the Lake, is not noticeable. It's not as big, and therefore Drain the Lake was made more difficult because I wasn't, ju I wasn't double jumping like I should have been. You can also attack with him in midair. His attack is kind of slow, but overall, Patrick is an upgrade from the original. He is the best upgrade from the original. Sandy is basically the same from the original, minus the stuff I already showed you a minute ago. And so, overall, I think that these characters, Spongebob, I would give him a 6 out of 10. Patrick, probably a 7 or 8 out of 10 for what he does. And Sandy, mm, I would give her like a 5 out of 10. Because also her attack is kind of bad and doesn't uh, stall you in the air. Patrick's even gives you forward momentum. So that would like make him the best character in the game. Sandy just kind of is just meh and she's awkward to control. And Spongebob with the cruise missile and bubble bowl and bash being just meh. Not amazing. Make him the worst character in my opinion. So now, what about Mr. Krabs and Patrick? So Patrick's is all right. They didn't change that. But let me show you. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. Mr. Krabs spatulas cost 104,000 shiny objects. That was 40 minutes of me grinding on top of the Goo Lagoon in that area that gives you the most shinies. That was a solid... 40 minutes of me grinding. As if the 50,000 ones isn't enough, they made it worse. And who knows why? That was already hard enough to get, and the casual player would not get that. But I had to sit here, and what I would do is I would do this. 
And I sat here, also listening to that really annoying noise. You heard that, that noise, because that's what happens when you complete the Connect the Towers mission. And I had to sit here and do that for a long time, and drown myself upwards of 40 minutes. The crabs is not that good. Going back to Hub, we have the movie theater returning. A lot of people might be wondering, was the movie theater going to return? What's in it? Well, let me show you what's in the movie theater. You talk to it, it's still 40,000 shinies. But watch this, this is what's in the movie theater. Okay, it's just pictures from the game. Legit, no joke. Pictures from the game. I guess to commemorate your gameplay, but still, 40,000 shinies is not a lot, or not a good price. And I feel like this should have been a 100% bonus that we would have wanted otherwise, but 40,000 shinies for that, no thanks. Okay, so now the bosses. What did I think of the bosses? Well, A, I can't show you any of them without that warp glitch, which I don't want to do right now because I fail it every time. You can't refight them, so that's something that they should patch and that they'll probably patch in the coming days. But I thought the bosses were too fast. Like, we did want them faster. Shift the, the main speedrunner and community member of this game. He specifically told them to make the bosses faster, but they made the bosses a little too fast, I feel. So often feeling like animations and cutscenes were fully cut off because they wanted to make it faster like the robo sandy just felt like there were a bunch of missing animations and frames it just made it feel awkward to watch her and awkward to fight against her if you want to see gameplay of that then go watch someone else's gameplay but i also thought that the camera angle for the boss fights was kind of odd and it made them feel smaller just more contributing so for robo sandy i would give the robo sandy fight a like a four out of ten honestly it was too fast the camera was in a bad place and it just was way too easy king jellyfish i can't i can't replay king jellyfish but what I thought of King Jellyfish was that his fight was kind of difficult. Because in addition to like King Jellyfish being King Jellyfish, uh, they did patch the cruise missile thing being able to hit him. So I'm happy about that kind of. But you can't really do the spin on him because the spin attack is kind of a weird hitbox. You have a weird hitbox. So sometimes I would go up to him and I would spin, wondering why I didn't hit him, or wondering why instead of hitting him, I instead took damage. And so that was the mo that was super annoying, was that the that I just couldn't hit him and it felt just out there and not right. So King Jellyfish, I would give the fight about the same as Robo Sandy. It didn't feel right and it didn't feel good. So I would just not, I would just not do that. What about the other bosses? Let's go to Prawn. Prawn overall felt all right. His boss fight felt about the right pace actually. Out of all the bosses in this game, I felt like Prawn was probably the best boss. And I would give his fight a good seven or eight out of 10. It wasn't like amazing, amazing, but it wasn't horrible like Robo Sandy and King Jellyfish. So I would give him a 7 out of 10. Robo Pat, his fight, just like Robo Sandy, was a bit too fast and often felt like sound effects and cutscenes were cut off because they were too slow. And so Robo Pat, I would rate as 5 or 6. It was average, like Robo. It wasn't like Robo Sandy's where it was just impossible, and or uh, really diff 
really easy, I mean, but it was just not that good. I would give it like a 5 or 6 out of 10, you know? And then there was the Dutchman fight. The Dutchman fight felt like it was a little kid's fight. I would rate the Dutchman's fight like a 3 out of 10. It was way too easy. The, the lasers were way too slow. That like anyone can be him now. It's that you don't feel like you have to actually like test your knowledge and test your challenges. You just go up there and be him whenever. And yeah, he just felt easy. Along with the weird lasso and throw mechanics. Which by the way, I don't know how to show this, but it's not based off where your character is uh, looking. You have to control it with your camera. So if you have two different things you want to throw at, you can actually get stuck and you might not be able to throw it at the right thing because your camera angle is not right. So keep that in mind if you are playing with like throwing and lassoing that it's on where your camera angle is and sometimes even that doesn't work not where your character is facing and so that really threw me off and that was something that added difficulty to dutchman fight and to like jellyfish fields and such finally for our bosses we have robo sponge which watch what happens when you try and go here this fight honestly wasn't too bad you can't okay so you don't get to fight him you don't get anything he's just gone this fight was maybe just a little bit fast like it didn't suffer as bad as robo sandy and i feel like they just made all the phases easier which i'm kind of glad about because honestly the original game the phases felt kind of difficult if you weren't like really advanced then the timing was really tight so i'm glad about that so phase one of robo sponge i would give something like a seven out of ten i mean it was kind of like prawn like i would rate it like right below prawn part two look how amazing part two looks first of all this this part is probably one of my favorite parts of the whole game and also the only boss fight you can actually re-fight. And so I would give part two some something like a uh, seven, like a eight or nine. It was actually it looks really good. It's really amazing. And yeah. Which also now we're gonna talk about the enemies. Most notably, the the biggest enemies that have changed are slick chucks and and the uh the tartar bots so first let's start with slick and we're gonna actually go into something like the dutchman's and i'm gonna show you this robot was made more difficult in my opinion because they show where the thing goes but it's really difficult to actually, like look, look at the hitbox, it's really big. And so because like the dot isn't the whole hitbox, and so that makes it really hard to dodge his attacks, and he feels almost impossibly hard to beat. Which is a problem. The chucks. Remember how the chucks were really difficult in the first, in the original? They're brain dead easy. Watch how, okay, first of all, look at what I just did. I, you can single jump and kill these guys. You don't have to double jump anymore or do a bash. You single jump and you can kill them. By the way, also, Dutchman's graveyard looks nasty. I don't like the look of this level. I don't like the green fog. Level just looks nasty. And wall jumps, I forgot to mention, are super easy. They're just spam A. No longer is it like aiming your control stick. This is literally just spam A. And then that's how you win. But look, like, I can just do this. I don't have to bash. I don't have to use Sandy. The chucks are too easy now. 
and they show where they're aiming. Their splash is just right outside the range of it. So yeah, I feel like he's too easy. Slicks are too difficult. And the Tartar bots are somewhere in the middle. Apparently their case doesn't have a hitbox, which can kind of uh, affect gameplay. I mean, it didn't affect me too much, but to some people that might be a big, gigantic issue. So overall, enemies, also all the rest of the enemies are basically the same. They were just remade, but they're not any more difficult or any easier or anything. Enemies, I would rate like a 5 or 6 out of 10. It's because some of the enemies are just really weird now. They look great, but they're really weird. I also like how they get the red and green eyes, whatever. The bosses overall, the bosses I would say is a fair 6. They were too fast, and they just didn't feel right. Characters, like I said, about 6 or 7. So right now this game is getting about a 6. Minus the graphics, that was a 9. Now I'm just going to go through every level and I'm going to show you a few seconds from each level. I've already seen the hub. So I'm going to go jellyfish fields. The grass feels really fluffy and this level is really vibrant. In terms of looks, I would give this level a 10. This level looks great. We all knew it was going to look great. Minus the loading times, which that's another important thing, is Hans and loading times. Before we go downtown, let's talk about Hans and loading times, and, and the invis walls. Invis walls are abundant in this game, and they can cause the game to feel awkward and bad. Same thing with Hans. Sometimes, whenever you get pulled by Hans, he has to pull you like three times, and then a loading screen appears. And so he can feel really weird and like forced. Goo is also not fixed from the original. And they don't play the hurt animation. They just play a weird like. Mm -hmm. And like. I don't know. It just feels awkward. Loading times. You could see that load time was like 2 seconds. Depending on your PC it might be more or less. The switch I hear is 30 seconds. Every time you die, you wait 30 seconds. Most of the time in this game, you're barely alive for 30 seconds to a minute before you die again. So having 30 second load times at an unstable frame rate is not something that I think is a good idea. So Jellyfish Fields, amazing. The gameplay of it is every level is like the original, keep in mind. So yeah. Let's go to downtown and talk about the last thing I forgot to talk about in terms of gameplay, the bungees. And we're going to show off the Sea Needle. The Sea Needle has a bit much fog, but look at this bungee. If you're going down, you can attack him from b below. Wh what happened? What happened? What's wrong with my camera? Sometimes in the bungees, your camera will go crazy or your character will go crazy and you'll just kind of go somewhere and these bungees are impossibly hard to control. Even more so than the cruise bubble. These are impossibly hard to control. Oftentimes, except for downtown, you will just be buying a bungee to essentially get a crab spatula. And it's really bad how these bungees control and it'll take you a good few minutes to get everything in this. Like, look, you can't die for a while either. And like my camera freaked out again. At least you can hit the tiki's from below. But this downtown level is made too difficult because they decided to mess with how bungees work. Downtown was your average level. I would say downtown was about 7. It wasn't horrible. It wasn't great. 
So, yeah, it's like not really a level I'm gonna remember from the remake, let's say. Now let's go Goolagoon. This is the level that everyone says has f big frame drops. So if you're going into this game, Goolagoon has tons and tons of frame drops. For me, it's not as noticeable again. Maybe a little bit, but not really, but. Let's look around here. This level looks pretty great. I mean, of course it's Goo Lagoon. And it doesn't look as good as Jellyfish Fields, but it still looks pretty good. We're gonna we're even gonna go to the pier. Or we're gonna go through the caves. Which I should have done the jellyfish caves, which look way better. The Gulagoon Caves is very similar to Jellyfish Caves. So if you think this looks great, I'm just going to show you this. Then Jellyfish Caves looks just like this. Now we're going to go to the pier. So let's let's just quickly go to the pier. I'm showing off everything. I get that. This is a bit of a longer review. But I'm here to show this off. So if you want a shorter review then please tell me and I will make a shorter review. Also, just because we ran into it, these TP boxes, they feel weird. No animation, no nothing. And they have four handles and you just kind of jump into them. Look at the pier. The pier just looks, um, looks too good. Uh, the pier I would give an 8 out of 10. If Jellyfish Fields is the best, the pier is probably my second favorite looking level in the game. It looks great. Minus the skee ball machine. I think the skee ball machine just could use more lighting and could have used a bit more work. But other than that, looks great. And I like the, I like the looks of this level. Look, he, he's stunned? I couldn't even tell he was stunned. Also worth noting, you can pick up top tiki's now. You don't have to pick up the tiki's there on the bottom. But like I said, his throwing mechanic is kind of uh, jank and not good. Pier, amazing. Poseidon I would show, but remember we don't have boss fights. Mermelair. This level was known for being dark and not so great in the original. They lit it up. This level kind of looks more like an underground base now. More so than just an underground like whatever cave. They lit the level up a whole lot. And they just overall made this level look way better. I was showing off the bug. Like the Mermelair weird bug I knew. Also worth knowing Arf was a big update but he's no different I showed this off Mermelair amazing what about ballroom is that any better yeah ballroom is all right compared to the original I thought this one did ballroom slightly better there's a lot of people that might complain about it but here's my take part one of the ballroom was was easier this part was more difficult because this guy, this footer, that was usually just kind of off to the side, he felt more in the way. And so that made it more difficult for me to bowl into this button. This part was also meh. They actually put walls on the side, by the way. And then the windmill was spinning really fast, and I was really annoyed by that. But overall, I think the ballroom was made slightly easier in this game. And that's a good thing. And that it might not be intentional, it might have just been how they did the mechanics. But I felt the ballroom was made slightly easier, minus the fact that the momentum of the ball can sometimes be lost for no reason at all. Like let me let me see if I can actually do the ballroom. Yeah, you can. So I'm gonna show you the ballroom. Look at that. Look how slow the ball is too. Definitely made easier. It's gonna make it, yep. 
The noise that they use for it's also kind of annoying, but that's another story for another day. So let's just do the ballroom real quick, and I'm going to show you what this is about. The ball is like 10 times slower. Where is it? Oh, it's coming around. They made this part look great. Remember to stand on the back. Because if you bowl wrong, then you're going to be in a weird spot and you're not going to be able to get this. It kind of just hopped and lost momentum there. Remember that there's a footer here that's going to get in the way. This part was made a lot faster. And yeah, we're just going to show off this ballroom. I feel like this isn't something that they showed off a whole lot in the videos, so I'm just going to show it off here. Bowling and its weird properties. This part is really difficult. Like, you can see I just made the ball go off. But this part's still pretty difficult. The sock's still back there. And yeah, I almost showed it off all the way. Ballroom was was much improved, I felt. Minus the weird momentum things that they do sometimes, but ballroom much improved. Now let's go to rock bottom. They lit up this level. This level still doesn't look amazing to me. Like, I know a lot of people are going to say different, but rock bottom, I think it's supposed to always be a dark level. Honestly, minus the neon signs and the slide lit up, this part doesn't look any different. And so, I don't really like this that much. It was just, it was just alright in the original, it's just alright here. It basically looks exactly the same. A lot of people are going to disagree with me, but that's how I felt. At least it made these platforms easier to go across. Let's go to the museum really quick. And I'm going to show you the museum. In case you haven't seen it. The museum looks pretty cool. I don't like the fog that we have in here. That's a common occurrence is that they put too much of it. Jellyfish Fields was probably the best level about it. But yeah. They put too much fog. I forgot to rate the Mermelair. I'd rate the Mermelair a solid 7. Still. 7 or 8. Rock bottom, I'd rate a 6 or 5. Like, To me, it just didn't look that good. Now let's go to Sand Mountain. Possibly the worst looking level in this game. Only because of the fog. If I could actually see a thing I was doing in Sand Mountain, I would be okay at, after the hub world. Like, you can barely see anything. The hub world, like, this is what the level should have looked like all around. This part is a good 8. But let me show you. You probably already saw it. The slides are what bring this level way down. So look, you can barely see anything. I can barely see over here. Remember loading times. But yeah, this is a solid, like, this level I would give a 3 or 4. Maybe even a 2, like, the worst level in the game. And the gameplay is kind of hindered by the fact I can't see anything. I was surprised to get down these slides in the first try. And that's not to mention, too... Flounder Hill has the same issues. The same 8 Sandman issue where you can't go down the hill and die. Or else the 8 Sandman get reset. The, the last one was alright. I did feel like that all the slide time challenges were a bit tight. Like that I was barely able to get through it and I was going like as fast as I can. Just... It didn't feel like there was enough time for a beginner to say, I can go through this sort of easily. It just felt really tight and like you had to be more advanced players to 
to go down these slides, which I get that. Not everyone's supposed to master everything the first playthrough and get all the spatulas, but for 100%, it just felt really tedious and annoying that these slides had really tight times. But these levels are essentially the same, like I was showing off. Sand Mountain, now we're going to go to Dream. This is the level that everyone's seen the most gameplay of. I'm going to show every level in here, though. Well, I thought of Dream. Hub World, the spikes have weird hitboxes. Like, I can't do this anymore. That might not. That might just be me not able to do what I like. But these spikes have really weird hitboxes. And they're kind of small because of how the game plays. Like... Every target is smaller, or feels smaller to me. And so everything just controls really awkwardly. In this part, the spatula was in a weird place. The ball definitely stayed on the track, like... The ball was basically like rolling ball, where it was forcing itself to stay on the track. And it just felt weird. The spatula was moved, probably to prevent, like, people from doing what they did in the original. But, it was moved to an awkward place. And sometimes picking up spatulas in this game also is very uh, weird and clunky. Because sometimes the hitbox or the box of the spatula, you won't hit it even though you hit the spatula and obviously should have collected it. So this hub world here... There's a bit of fog. I mean, it's not horrible. It's not great. I'd say it's a 6 out of 10. What about Sandy's Dream? The one that everyone saw the most gameplay of. You didn't as much see the hub as you saw Sandy's Dream. Honestly, because it's mostly slides and I didn't like slides, I, gave, I would give this one... Well, I mean, shout out to them for creating a custom uh, skybox thing at the bottom. Also, every dream used the same skybox. I'd give Sandy's dream about what I gave the hub world because the sliding is very uh, inconsistent and weird in this game. Also, Larry's not as big and, like, buffed. So, yeah. What about Squidward's dream? This is a bit difficult. Like I said, this all the levels struggle with everything being smaller. Like, look at how small these notes are sometimes. And this can really cause the game to feel weird and... I don't know. Squidward's Dream just felt like all the notes were too small. For Unless you really were a master. And sometimes in, like, the moving note parts, the notes won't spawn. Like... Sometimes the, the jump is just abnormally big, as in like a note didn't spawn, and you're forced to die and reset from the checkpoint because one of the notes is just not there. That might be their cycle that they have, but it feels weird, just how the notes sometimes don't spawn. Like, what is that big jump? It's especially apparent when we get to the yellow moving notes. Also, the trampoline jump here is kind of small. It's impossible to hit the hit the jump no matter where you are. I mean, so it forces you to wait again. Something that this game does too. Like sometimes it forces you to wait and dream, and the jumps can be impossible from certain areas. Like, these jumps should not be impossible. They should just be more difficult the further it is. And be nearly free if the, if it's, like, super close. But, like, I'm going to show you what I mean. There, there's, like, notes missing. Like, right here, you can barely make the jumps. Sometimes the notes are just missing. Yeah, Squidward's Dream, like, 
I get the difficulty. I get that it's like a platforming challenge and it's cool and it does what it needs to do. Overall, the same as Sandy's dream. I'm giving all the dream levels right now, like the ones I've done, the same because they all suffer from like major gameplay issues that make him not unplayable, but make him unpleasant to play. So let's go to Krabs' dream. Can't show a lot of gameplay. I'm kind of sad that they didn't like use the same skyboxes. But because of the slick robots and the, these two robots being difficult kind of, this level is just weird. Also, they kind of made it so you can't cheese with the cruise bubble. Just so you guys know. But because of slick and that this level was made really difficult it took me a few tries to actually beat this level now this is probably the worst part of dream now like I would give this a 5 out of 10 because it just felt abnormally difficult and it just kind of felt like this amount of robots was not needed Maybe it was to test some stuff, but like, it really just felt unwanted and not needed. Then we have Patrick's Dream. It's, it's basically the same as the original. There's not a lot to say about it. Just, if, if, uh, yeah, there's, there's not a lot to say about Patrick's Dream. We can even go in there and show you, like, it's the same thing as the original. So I'm not going to rate Patrick's Dream, but Crab's Dream Gate got the lowest... You can see it's literally just this. Let's see, can I go on forever? It doesn't even go on forever anymore. Boo. Now let's go to Kelp Forest and just see what Kelp Forest is about. First thing you'll notice in Kelp Forest is that it looks 10 times better. In terms of graphics, this is probably my second or third favorite level. But because the gameplay of every single level is the same and your powers can feel very clunky and not there, this level was just not fun for me. I often found myself not knowing what to do and backtracking because their gameplay was not made apparent. And or it was just major backtracking. So this and Kelp Caves. So Kelp Forest overall, I'd rate it like a five. Like like I say, like the backtracking was kind of bad, but it looks amazing. So it keeps a five. Like the gameplay part of it, probably a two or a one. It's not it's not that good, but the graphics were what held this in place. You can see like the caves look great now. They're not dark. You can actually see what you're doing great and then the last level which I already said looked ugly is the graveyard this level is just meh you can still do this jump but because of spongebob controlling better because of a lot of things like the graphics I would give it three or two like this is the most this is the ugly level in the game we got the most gameplay and oh honestly like no one was so sure with the green fog the green fog just kind of makes it look that much worse so this level I would give a four it's just it doesn't look great that goo ha doesn't have a hitbox by the way so don't ever worry about that can't really see what I'm doing in this part especially so yeah so overall what would I give the levels and the gameplay of this game like the overall rating of this game I forgot to talk about the hub menu which looks great I'd give this hub menu like a seven or eight but overall this game has landed itself with a solid, I would say 7, 7.5 in my opinion. Maybe, maybe 
somewhere between a 6.5 and 7.5. The graphics bring it up a lot and help to kind of sort of uh, make up for the fact that the gameplay was made tremendously worse and a lot of the powers and a lot of the characters were very buggy and don't feel good to play. So yeah. This is kind of a longer review, but I wanted to go into I wanted to go into every level and kind of share about does it look good, what my rating is. I wanted to explain all the mechanics that I remember in this game. So, yeah. Also the cutscenes look good, but like the cutscenes I forgot about this. The cutscenes are kind of also off on the voice on PC. If you load, then like the video is going to be a quarter of a second ahead of the voice lines. But yeah. So, if you're wondering, 6.5 to 7.5, like it's not amazing. It's not horrible. I definitely prefer the original, even though the graphics of this one look so amazing. So if we got the original's like gameplay and feel, but the graphics of the new one, then this game could easily be one of the best games around. But yeah, because I wanted to stick to the original, it's not necessarily a bad thing that they stuck to the original, and that was their choice. So don't bash the game like IGN and Game Explain, which I'm gonna pull up Game Explain and IGN stuff right now. Let me show you. IGN five. They didn't really have any good points. Like if you read through this all, it's a bunch of bullcrap. And that's not even to go into the multiplayer. Like, I didn't go into the multiplayer. Go somewhere else if you want about the multiplayer. I haven't played it. I've heard it sucks. I'm not rating the multiplayer. But it would probably get a 2 out of 10. Game Explain disliked. I think he even gave it a 2 out of 10. So, yeah, like, these guys, they had good points, but, like, a lot of it was just meh. They just kind of, you know, that's my stream, but they were just whatever. And, and by the way, I was using a GameCube controller. I set up my GameCube controller with my PC. If you play with the keyboard and mouse, it honestly didn't feel right to me. It might feel right to you, but I would recommend playing this game with a controller. The cruise bubble is probably my least favorite part, and yeah. Hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, I can simplify the review, as I said, if you want that. Please comment below if you do. Like and subscribe for more if you want to see more games reviewed that I like and care about. And yeah. I will see you guys in the next review video ever. And goodbye.